Alright everyone, uh, this is Cali, and I'm bringing you an FMVP Dota cast of the Raid Call Dota 2 League Season 2 uh, game, and we're here with No Tidehunter against Redefining Mad Madness, uh, previously known as MTW, and um, for some reason my sound went way up, uh, or not I guess, the music doesn't need to be high though, there we go, okay. Um, so me and Joey were supposed to cast this game. Um, I guess maybe he has some uh, business to attend to. I'm not sure really, but hopefully he can uh, come on and join me uh, soon, or at least for game two or something like that. And if it goes to game three, maybe he'll be there for that as well. So, um, but for now, it's just um, it's just me, and I'm already seeing some interesting bans here. We got the Razor being banned out first by No Tide to me. That's just like kind of a troll ban there. Uh, but previously they banned out Darkseer. Um, Redefined Man has taken out Wisp and Lone Druid first. Uh, we all know how admirable, admirable dogs uh, Lone Druid is in that off lane as well as just uh, he's just an overall good player with it. Um, no Tide Hunter also taken out Lina, Shadow Demon, and Rubik. I'm just going to say all the bans here. And uh, Redefined Man has taken out Phantom Lancer, Anti Mage, and Gyrocopter. So banning out a uh, Quite a few carries. Uh, Phantom Lancer being one of the best carries in this patch, and I know uh, no, no Tide Hunter is pretty famous for picking that guy up there, so uh, and running him as a support as well as a carry. So a uh, good ban there by Redefining Madness. Uh, any of these bans, nothing really stands out for uh, specific towards Redefining Madness. I know they like to run uh, a few heroes, like the Invoker, Cinder, and like uh, uncommon heroes that people don't always pick. Uh, pick up like the Invoker and the Night Stalker, Cinder and likes to run him in the mid lane, but not this game. And uh, so no Tidehunter, I'm kind of behind here, no Tidehunter picking up Mix, uh, Keep the Light Bane in their first three picks, and Redefining Man is taking out Batrider, or picking up Batrider, Life to and Magnus, so pretty strong uh, picks here, all six picks uh, in the first in the first uh, picking phase. Bane, a little bit unusual, but maybe it's something that uh, S4 wants to try out in the mid lane, or if they want to run them as support. They do have the Nyx and the Keeper of Light though as support, so uh, we might see a Bane here in the middle lane. Nature Prophet might be going the off lane. Uh, probably going to be played by Admiral Bulldog. And uh, so yeah, that's their fourth pick. And Redefined Mana taking up Disruptor and Chen, so possibly a just defensive jungling Chen. Uh, an overall support with the Disruptor, and I mean a hard support with the Disruptor, and then a, a Lifesteal carry. We'll probably be seeing Magnus in the uh, middle lane played uh, Cinderin and then Batrider in the off lane. I think is most likely in uh, in this case. Um, but we have seen a lot of life steals go into offensive tri lanes. He's, uh, he's just really strong at bursting down a hero and being immune to uh, all spells from uh, the tri lane. So pretty good at taking out heroes uh, with the life stealer. Is, uh, if you pair him with some supports, but I don't think that's going to be the case. We got a Chen here. It's uh, pretty hard to offensive jungle <coughs> with a Chen. And uh, like I said, no tight ender have the Nature's Prophet. And they've got one more hero to pick here. I think they'll most likely pick up a carry. But um, I don't know, we'll have to see who faces Void is still in the pool. And uh, one of the best carry one of the best carries to go against a life stealer, the uh, Chronosphere uh, of course, uh, going through that magic immunity that the life stealer will have, so we'll see. Yeah, and Luna's also in the pool and there's Luna, so just a really good, really good carry, really good pushing carry, uh, grouping up his five kind of carry, and uh, pairs well with uh, with a lot of these heroes. So, not really a surprising pick. And uh, I'm guessing this is Loda, Kelly, my Valentine, <laughs> uh, being playing, gonna be playing the Luna there. So he's their carry player. And uh, just waiting for some of these uh, players to select their select their heroes. I think we went over, we saw another game being played by Redefined Madness, Iconoclast. It was a, I guess he's their new player. I don't think that's a, I don't think that's a alternate name, but uh, maybe it is, you never know. Ten seconds. And um, my throat is a little sore, so I'm probably going to be taking a lot of water breaks this cast. And, uh, just to kind of clear it out. No joy to come in with that expert play-by-play. Uh, -play. So I'll try my best to, to cover it. But um, on the Dire here, we've got Eternal Envy playing that uh, playing that Bane, so it looks like it is going to be a support Bane. Because um, S-Sport is their mid player. we got Keeper Light being played by Aki. Uh, he's picked up a Luminate level 1. 
And he's just got a bunch of consumables uh, as well as one iron wood branch, or just an iron branch, I guess they're called now. Uh, Loda, I'm just saying it's Loda. We're gonna be playing this Luna, uh, not going for the NTH typical style of uh, not buying any items and being pulled one tangos and going for that fast meta. So, kind of looks like it might be uh, a, a Luna who uh, is gonna probably rush that um, that ring, that uh, yeah ring of Aquila. Uh, the circle going into the Wraith Band, of course, and the Ring of Protection going into the Ring of Basilius. You combine them up, and you get that uh, nice pushing power. Looks like there might be a little bit of an engage here, but uh, the tree scouting it out. So I, I think I don't know if uh, Redefined Madness will want to take a fight here. The uh, the disruptor not really good level one hero. All they can do is, is lightning. The kinetic field won't really uh, do much. They can NTH can kind of just stay together and, and be as strong as they would anyway. And uh, the Bat Rider though is a, a good level one hero. Can just drop Firefly all over the other team. But it looks like uh, with that scouting out, um, nothing's going to happen. Sentry Ward being dropped there in the jungle by by the Dire. Oh, I hear a Skewer there by uh, Pep on the Magnus. Looks like that's going to be an offline Magnus. I was introducing the teams, though. We got S4 on the Nyx uh, going mid. Look for a fast bottle. I think it's actually fun all these tangles as well, so uh, it's going to be a pretty quick bottle. Only lose about 100 gold. Two or three last hits, and, uh, and he'll have that really soon. And uh, Admiral Bulldog on the Prophet going into the safe lane offlane, so we're going to have to see an aggressive try here. A little bit of dewarding by uh, Eternal Envy. We're going to see an uh, offensive try with the Luna, the Bane, and the uh, and uh, the Keeper of Lights. Pretty strong combo. Put him to sleep. Looks like Aki might be caught out a little bit here. He can tango through those tree through that tree line and uh, escape just fine. Creeps being pulled here by by Loda. I'm not sure what his uh, what his goal here is, but Creeps will uh, going to be a little bit harder for Cinder to last it against the tower. Uh, on the Radiant side though, we've got Cinderin on the Nyx. Uh, so a little bit of a roll switch up maybe. Uh, he's he's going to be playing the carry roll for now. We've got Dutch playing the Chen in the um, in the jungle there. Gonna, uh, I hope that he'll uh, look for a quick level 6. Already some nice harassment coming out of here by Pep. Yeah, ho hopefully Chen goes for that quick level 6 and, uh, and they start to be able to defend the towers a little bit better. There's an Impale, and the Tower Aggro is on Magnus, so one more attack, he's going to be fine though, I think it's not going to kill him. He's going to escape with 25 health, S4 aware of that, he's not going to chase any longer. Um, <coughs> even though Pep was out of mana, but yeah, Pep playing the Magnus here, getting mana burn is so annoying here, going against the Nyx in the middle lane. It's uh, it's pretty hard, and even when you see that uh, that uh, Shockwave animation, S4 can pop the Carapace, and he's already got his bottle, that just goes to show... Uh, what the pooling the tangos can really do for a mid, and he's gonna be able to just spam impales at the uh, 130 mark, the 140 mark, and try to collect the runes uh, at the two and, and four and six mid mark respectively. So, um, so a nice job there by NTH trying to give their mid as much advantage as can. Admiral Bulldog's already got six stacks of uh, sticky napalm on him, so he's gonna have to be careful. If he got another one on him, I think Tulix could have probably gone for the kill, but has gone for fast boots of speed. I, I, maybe he was suspecting there was gonna be a. A defensive try lane. A go here on Nakes though. By Loda. He's just gonna turn around and go on Loda. Uh, I don't think he's got enough damage and Aki's kinda just kinda ushering him away. So uh, just a little skirmish there. Uh, like I was saying, Tulix on the Bat Rider up here on the top. Uh, he's gonna have a wonderful time I feel against the Nature's Prophet. Uh, as soon as he can get a few more levels up. He's actually gone for a pretty interesting skill build. Usually just go for max sticky napalm right away. I don't think you need that flame break. Especially with the uh, Firefly to just kind of burst over the trees if uh, if that's what the Prophet has in mind. But uh, going to pick it up anyway, gives him a little bit more mobility. I guess the, the early level of Flame Break is, is kind of nice for disrupting uh, team fight positioning and stuff like that, but it's it's not really common, especially at level 3. And uh, on the Disruptor, we got a kind of class, Iconoclast, uh, picked up first level in Glimpse. So uh, I don't know what that kind of, that kind of means that they're looking for pickoffs here, but um, I'm not really sure. I'm not a, I'm not really an experienced uh, disruptive player, but uh, yeah, going for glimpse. Max and glimpse is definitely uh, one of the best ideas uh, nowadays. With that range, it just becomes so huge. 1800 cast range. It's really impossible to get away from a disruptor. And Dust Freak doing a nice job of uh, uh, disrupting the Luna from farming a little bit here. I think my 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 cameras. I saw a, uh, a little bit of action. I don't think anything's going on. I saw Toby doing something. It was like smooth drag. Maybe I'll try that. Let's see how that works. Good. Oh, it's like <laughs> oh, that's pretty. Good. Anyway, uh, go on here on the Luna, and uh, there's the glimpse. So it's showing how strong it is already. They're gonna pick up the Kale Iconoclast. 
getting the last hit there. Would have been nice to get it on Cinderin <laughs> and maybe uh, help him get that fast armlet or fast Midas. But um, first blood always nice, and um, I'll try using this drag a little bit more. Get try to get used to it, but um, can't really go across the whole map like that. Looks like Tulix might go for a dive here on Admiral Bulldog. He's got the stacks up, but Admiral Bulldog's just gonna turn and fight. Does he have a magic wand? Yeah, he does, but he's already used it, so this is gonna be a close one. Three stacks still on him. It's, it's gonna be pretty close. You shoot the firefly. Oh, but the stacks went off. If the stacks were still on, I think Admiral Bulldog would have gone down there. But uh, stacks just not able to be. Uh, kept up on the uh, profit. He's going to TP in, actually. He's already solved up. Uh, S4 coming in with a big impale and admirable uh, picking up the last hit. So nice job by uh, the Nature's Prophet to just uh, survive that attack, solve up. Saw S4 coming in and uh, able to pick up a nice return kill there. So uh, pretty smart play there. and I guess uh, I'm kind of being showed up here. Admiral Bulldog doing a really nice job of, uh, of uh, going against a Batrider. I feel like this lane is just such an advantage for Batrider, but you know. Okay, this, this thing's too much. This smooth drag. I'm just going to do it normally. Hopefully it's not too annoying. And uh, yeah, here he goes. He's going to just have to keep laying the stacks on. But the creep aggros. I think he could stay. I, I really think Tulix can go for the kill here. Yep, there he goes. The wand being charged. And Admiral Bulldog's going to go down. Just the damage. Just too, really too much to handle. Oh, but the ultimate comes in from the grave. And Bulldog able to pick off Tulix. Um, nice job of keeping the uh, treants uh, following him to give him the vision for the ultimate to hit. So... I'm a bulldog playing really nicely here, able to uh, kill the Batrider again. Even though he did lose his life, he was able to, uh, to kill him again. So, uh, you know, not not really the worst situation you can ask for. I'm going to pull up the last hits here and look at it. S4 leading the charts here in the middle lane as we were expecting. He had that great start. He was almost able to kill him back in the middle lane, but uh, unable to. And followed by Luna. So Loda doing a really nice job of last hitting here in the offensive tri lane. And then an Admiral Bulldog taking third place. 25 and 3. Um, Cinder and having a little bit of trouble here. I'm not really sure what the issue is. He's got a, a tons of support. Just missing a few last hits, maybe uh, not timing it properly. Or maybe the uh, the uh, maybe the supports aren't doing the best job of trying to zone out these carries. You know what I'm just gonna oh actually again coming in here by S4, so I'm like, I'm gonna watch this. He's got his man boots already. He's got a set of observers, so if they can pick off a few kills here, yeah, I think they're going to go. Oh, he can't really attack there right now, so he's going to have to use a spell. Oh, yeah, they cancel it, and there's the new down right there by S4. Just the incredible burst damage of that combo is pretty much too much for a, for a little level, what is this, level 2 or 3? Yeah, Chen to handle. He's, he's so squishy at this point. S4 coming back in for more. He's got, he popped the mana boots, so he's got full mana. There's the advantage of the sleep, and there's the impale canceling off the sleep. Glimpse, glimpse back by S4, and uh, as soon as he's going to try to turn and fight here, a little bit of life steal going on, but not really enough. Batrider does TP in. I think Eternal Envy is going to go down here. Iconoclast also being taken out by the Nature's Prophet. Admiral Bulldog TPing in. A few last hits there, and as well as some horses there by Aki, and uh, they're able to finish off the Batrider. So really nice uh, fight there by S by uh, NTH taking out um, four, three heroes, I believe. Uh, the Chen did, went down really early. He's, out, he's already back into the jungle farming up. And uh, Loda just uh, missing the last hit there on the tower, so kind of unfortunate. But they do take out uh, three kills and get the uh, get that bottom tower. So nice job there. What do I need to do here? Interface. I'll just put these all low. Yeah, there we go. There, right, that's a little bit smoother. So uh, nice job by MTH. They're uh, I think they've got a really great advantage already. S4 looking for more. He's going for the Chen here. Gets that Vendetta hit. <laughs> Look at that. Right into the vent, right into the impale and the mana burn, and he's just about dead. So full combo doesn't even need a dagon. Ursa warrior chasing him down here. Oh, they're going on S4 though. He pops his carapace. Here's the Magnus though. Does he have his ultimate? He does. He has reverse polarity, but he's not really in a position to do so. Just uses a shockwave, and S4 goes down. Iconoclast being slept here by the bane. So oh, but Admiral Bulldog's just going to TP out. So relatively uh, low risk there by MTH, but the uh, Nyx does take a fall there. So. But only picking up the Chen and he is able to fall. So you know, nice response there by uh, by redefining madness. Keep uh, I'm, I'm tempted to keep calling him MTW, but nice kill there by redefining madness. And Pep did not have to use his reverse blitter. He's actually picked up a little bit of farm uh, while he was in the lane. Oh, the ward does spot him. He's, is he going to use his? Uh, yeah, he uses reverse blitter. But the ultimate coming in by Loda, picking off two heroes. There goes the um, the main elemental iconoclast being chased down on the instructor, and he is able to take a fall. Can they go here on Cinder and uses the mana burn and gets a stun there? And there's the Lucent Beam 
I'm not sure if they have enough damage. Full horse char charges coming out. It's not enough damage. Loda is does have a lucent beam though, and that's gonna pick him off. Admiral Bulldog also using his uh, teleport, but he's just gonna cancel it. Seeing as uh, Sidran was able to take a fall like that, and four heroes going down there, so only the Batrider left unscathed. And uh, looks like he might be able to go for uh, Admiral Bulldog if he gets like I'd say if he gets two or three stacks on him, he's that's pretty much a sure kill with that with that flaming lasso as well as the firefly. But uh, Admiral Bulldog has been playing really well, been playing really good positional play, and uh, so far he's been able to get return kills every time he's died. So nice job by him. And uh, Luna's still leading the last hit charts with uh, 46 and 8 now, followed by Admiral Bulldog. So I wonder what he's going to be going for. He's picked up his power treads. He's got a ring bacillus. He's got 1,500 gold in the bank. So uh, chosen not to upgrade that magic stick into a magic wand. That's pretty much fine. That's I think that's really all you need going against the Batrider is the magic stick. Uh, unless you're a hero that uh, can really benefit from the magic wand in the first place, which I don't feel like Prophet really is. He's not going to be in uh, long, drawn-out team fights. Uh, and if he is, he can just TP back to base and you know use that 20-second cooldown on teleport, uh, teleport to uh, just get back into the fight. So <clears throat> I feel like magic wand, not really the best choice for him. So nice job sticking to that magic stick. Even though it's only about 500 gold to, uh, or less, actually 400 gold to upgrade it, yeah, you know, it's not really worth it. He doesn't really need it. So he can uh, he can go for a hand of Midas or something like that, or uh, or it looks like they do want to be pushing here, so maybe a, a, an Ags to get that extra pushing power just globally for all lanes. Um, Loda actually did not go for that Ring of Aquila. He's picked up early Tranquil Boots, and he's saved up 3,000 gold. He's just able to pick off a few kills and leading the last hit charts. He's 2-1 right now. So uh, really nice start here by uh, Kelly, my Valentine. And... Uh, He's just left the naked circlet, so not choosing to go for that Ring of Aquila right off the bat. They, I guess they figured they don't really need it. And uh, they were able to kill that bottom tower, so I guess uh, showing that they don't really need it indeed. And uh, I think uh, NTH is going to look to uh, push down some more towers as 5 once they get a few more levels up on the Nature's Prophet. He's got level 3 in Nature's Call, so you know that's pretty strong pushing power. you got 4 trends. And... Uh, and S4 is doing a really good job so far in this game. He's he does have a magic wand. He's got an invis bottled, so he's gonna have that double invis. It's probably the worst rune you can get on a Nyx. Uh, I'd say even worse than than a um, than an illusion, but you know, it's, uh, any rune to get is is pretty fine. And the pod is gonna be over here. Everyone's saying to go. So uh, I'm really looking for Loda to pick up an item, maybe finish off the stack or try to do a little bit of the stack. Uh, but we'll see if he tries to rush that BKB or get a little bit of damage in the Yasha. I feel like a BKB uh, really quickly, he's, he's only about a thousand away from it, uh, would be just awesome in, in uh, early game team fights, pushing down towers. There's really nothing that Redefining Madness can do against it. Sure, the Knicks can uh, pop his rage and just kind of go berserk on him, but I feel like they have the shutdown power, they have the Bane, they, they can just use the ultimate on Cinder. And so there's that Navi Courier that we saw in another. Uh, another FMVP Dota cast. So, um, it was, yeah, that was Navi versus Redefined Madness, actually. They had that career, so it was pretty funny. Check that out if uh, if you haven't seen it yet. It's on our YouTube channel, FMVP Dota. Um, yeah, I guess won't say anything more about that. S4 has picked up a, a regen, and that's a lot better for him. He can use all his mana and then just kind of be up to full again. Uh, so. Nice run there, and I'm not sure if they're gonna. Yeah, look, they're just kind of trying to kill this the stack off here. Is Lode? He has bought some items. Where's that? Nothing in his stash, so it must be on the check. Oh yeah, I just kind of was juking him out of it. Oh, going for the drum. So yeah, that's definitely an early game push item. I feel like since he was so close to BKB, it wouldn't have been bad. But look up top here, Bulldog might have to use the trees, but the Firefly is still going. He's not gonna be able to. They would do pretty much nothing. And uh, with all that fire everywhere, they're just gonna back off here, or maybe they're just baiting the back off. Oh, but they put a sentry down. Really nice play there by uh, by redefining Madness. I guess if they were watching carefully on the map, they would see S4 here has used Vendetta. But it's only level one, so it's not really going to be uh, lasting that long. And it looks like he's just going to farm up these this stack here with Eternal Envy. Um, so yeah, Cinderin has found a little bit of farm here in the bottom lane. He's up to uh, 1,100 gold. He's just got power tread so far. I think at this point you pretty much have to abandon all hopes of going for the Midas. And, um, and just go for an armlet. Uh, or, you know, go for drums, something like that, some other early game item. 
uh, drums into a Maelstrom build is uh, is becoming more and more popular nowadays. Um, so that's an option as well, but he's, he's just going to be slow farming, attacking his creeps whenever he can, whenever they get past uh, half health, and pretty much not attacking the other creeps until uh, until the very last hit, which will keep the creep e equilibrium around this point in the, uh, in the wave. But NTH says, go ahead and free farm bottom all you want, Nix, we're not really scared, we're just going to take your top tower. There's a flame break coming in, but it actually pushes S4 a lot closer to Lex. He's just going to firefly and get away, though. This is going to be a pretty free tower. Admiral Bulldog picking up the last hit. He's got 3,000 gold, so NTH just kind of going with a the theme of saving up their gold. I wonder what he'll be getting. Just just waiting till, uh, till to see what item he needs, and then going to be able to pick it up there. So not really rushing anything. I like that. Nice patience being shown here by NTH. And these drums just playing uh, huge dividends already in the, in the push here. S4 using an impale. Let's see, yeah, he's going to use a mana drain. Doesn't really need to move, though, so I think his mana's going to be safe. Here's Magnus coming in. Big reverse polarity. He's got the shockwave. Here's uh, Cinder go, just wailing on Kelly My Valentine. Is Loda going to go down before he can even pop anything? He does. Yeah, she's not, killing, not, not showing up there on the kill there, but S4 picking up the Magnus after he was able to reverse polarity, and Loda buying back. S4 is trapped in here, but he's going to just TP out. Oh, no, he's not. The stun coming in. I'm not sure what stun that was, actually, but... He's just going to turn around, and is he actually going to go down? Yeah, he is. Lifestealer picking him up. Uh, S4 was, or uh, Iconoclast really low in the turn line. He's just going to die to the tower here in the middle lane. It's either that or a shockwave from uh, from the satire Hellcaller being, being controlled by Dutch. So, Oh, but the battle's not over. Admiral Bulldog diving in hugely into the base, trying to pick off Iconoclast, I'm assuming, but uh, redefining Madness, uh, pretty wise to the idea. And... Um, after that death, Admiral Bulldog decided that he just wants a, a Necron, Necronomicon. One of the hardest words for me to say, I guess. Joey uh, usually takes that. Necronomicon. Oh, there he is. <laughs> so you're, you're here now? You just scared the hell out of me. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was like I've, I've a voice been in my here head. for like the last eight minutes. Oh my god. Why did you say that? game before I said anything. I don't know how to interrupt My that. voice is so dry. Oh my god, I thought that was like a voice in my head being like, you know, I'm not even going to try to say it again. I don't know what cancelled the TP from S4 either. Yeah, maybe he cancelled himself, thought he could uh, take out Iconoclast. But, uh, who knows? Going for Roche now, are you in the game then, or you just, uh, yeah, you, yeah, you couldn't the resist anything? I, I was fixing a bind uh, okay. uh, before I kept talking. I don't know what to do. You know, I'll keep doing the background, you can do the play-by-play, -play, or we could just switch, but I don't know if the cameras will match up. Uh, go ahead and take the play-by-play. -play. Uh, I'll just, I'll just record. Uh, Alright, so Roshan here going down, um, no Tidehunter, is Kelly my Valentine stand-in, or do, do we know I'm Loda? pretty sure that's Loda, he's always got kind of funny names. That's, that sounds about right. So Loda picking up the, uh, the Aegis of the Immortal there, gonna finish up this ancient stack, meanwhile, uh, Cinderin and the crew. Uh, pushing down the top tower there, but uh, gonna get caught in Fiend's grip. Three man gank on Cinder and Cinder going down. Eternal Envy there getting the kill on the on the support Nyx or it was no that's S4 so he was mid. Yeah. Alright, the support Bane. Yeah, S4 has been doing a really good job in the middle lane, and uh, he's actually going for a dagger. Wow, he's not going dead now. So kills are sorry, I'm just gonna catch myself up. Are reasonably close. The gold graph, uh, two and a half k advantage of the for the dire. So that's no tide hunter. Oh, that rider. Rider. Gold other oh, that rider last right on to uh, eternal envy, but and caught in a kinetic field. A kind of class there for uh, MTW. But gonna go down. The horses are strong. The horses take out bat rider. The <laughs> Luna alt up the hill takes out uh, Magnus there. Now a kind of. Iconoclast gonna get stuck up, gonna have a good kinetic field, but not enough to save his life there. He's gonna drop to uh, Admiral Bulldog playing another hero. He plays a lot. Yeah. Hey, check out Loda. He's picked up a Mask of Madness. Uh, pretty interesting there. <laughs> I guess going for Just a fast early push. Game, yeah. Weekend. Yeah. It seems like that's been the theme. The drums as well. Yeah, the uh, Were they, uh, Cinder, uh, Cinder is redefining really. Madness. Yeah. What uh, just their name? Yeah, has changed. Cinder has really not been able to find any farm. He's he's he slow farmed for like three or four, maybe even five minutes on the bottom lane, and all he's got is a is an armlet. They had a defensive tri lane. Did redefining madness on the bottom lane against uh, an offensive tri lane by uh, MV Aki and and Loda, 
and and Lode actually was leading the last hit charts, so I was a little surprised at that, but you know, I don't know, just was able to uh, get more farm. I'm not really sure what the problem was, but because you you all, you kind of think that life is pretty good, you know, in a trial versus trial situation. Yeah, he is indeed. Ake taking a little too many hits there from the ancient. This ancient deck is ginormous. There's gonna be so much golden experience going the way of. Um, so back to that graph. Dire. It was at 2.5. Now they've shot up to about six, seven k because of kills in this ancient stack coming out. And then uh, Dire had an XP about 4k. So still a pretty close game. But it could get away from redefining madness here if they're not careful. But Batrider, they know they get uh, they get Loda. So Aegis has popped here. The rest of the team is smoked up. So we're gonna have to see what's gonna happen here. Big uh, kinetic field from Iconoclast onto S4. Keeping them locked in. But horses and Loda's is down. Loda's is down. There's an RP coming out of Magnus right there. Big skewer back into Ake and Admiral Bulldog. Super low right now. Cinder in with the uh, the infest damage. Pop out AOE doing insane amount of damage. Last hit these necros for 200 gold, despite the damage taken, and finish this ancient stack. So yeah, yeah. I'm really, just when I was saying the game could get away from him, redefining madness takes the game by the horn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, three, pretty much I guess a four for one. Uh, seeing as they took out the Aegis as well before the fight even started, uh, really nice coordination there by uh, redefining madness. I gotta say, I guess that word really paid off. Oh, it looks like a glimpse coming in now. They're gonna find the bane. Yeah, glimpse from my kind of class. Kinetic fielding, eternal envy, and then last hits from Cinderin and Peppy there enough to take him down. And the yeah. kill actually going the way of I have no idea. It doesn't doesn't tell me. Uh, Cinderin got it. Looks like. But S4. Peppy caught up by uh, S4. S4 uh, pretty low. He's not doesn't have an insane amount of stuff. Loda pops uh, Eclipse there, able to pick off Counterclass on the Disruptor quite easily. Admiral Bulldog TPing in as well. They're looking for. Uh, I don't really know who they're looking for. Tulex, I guess. And uh, Tulex finds them. We got another engagement over here. Cinder and just gonna rage and TP out. Oh, just makes yeah. it. Just makes it, yeah. So Pepe, the only one taking the fall there. Actually, the disruptor was did take a fall really early on, but he's able to respawn already. Actually, did he buy back? Yeah, he did. So yeah. forcing him buy back there. And that's what I love about NT. It's just going for. Well, I guess pretty much just Loda. Going for crazy items. That mass matters. He is going to get a BKB. Love now. Loda. Yeah, he's great. Too bad he loves Kelly. Whoever she is, she's a lucky woman. Yeah, it's unfortunate. <laughs> Fortunate for us single Dota players. Loda's taken. What are you talking about? I got a hot day tonight. No, I don't. What? <laughs> I don't. We're and casting it's Dota 2. We're it's Tuscar. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we, we got some Sevo games tonight we can do. Ta, totally a Ta down. game, or should I say a Nexus game? Uh, Icon was just telling me that they yeah, got sponsored. Yeah, what are they rebranding here? Oh, for sponsored. real? Yeah. I figured that's what that was, but I didn't know. That's pretty awesome news. Oh, so. they're gonna leave us in the they're gonna leave us in the dust. We're not big. So we need a sponsor. <laughs> Maybe Nexus will sponsor us. Yeah. Well, congrats to them anyway. They uh, they've been playing yeah, really well lately. Yeah. Serious. Ooh, Eternal Envy has picked up a, a, a blink dagger. So a few blank daggers coming out. We got one on uh, Magnus as well as the die rider. Um, Envy as well as a sport, which I mentioned a lot earlier. And Lotus picked up his blacking bars right now. Cinderin had that uh, armor, he's had that for a while. Looks like they're going to try to find Envy, he's just going to look away. So already working out for him. And uh, he and Cinderin has picked up a Mithril Hammer, so it's probably going to be a Deso, could be a Maelstrom though as well. So a few choices for him, depending on what they need. Uh, I feel like both of those are kind of good choices. We have a lot of blink daggers in this game, two on each team right now. Peppy and Tulex and then Eternal Envy and NTH. Yeah, yeah. Standard blink daggers for redefining madness, so they're not they're not redefining so much madness, but Envy gets caught out here by a glimpse. Showing the power of glimpse and why disruptor is so annoying. Top tower, Admiral Bulldog doing work over here with uh, S4. So Peppy TP's up as well as Cinderin. Uh, clearing that wave, gonna take out the Check out S4 here. He immediately vendetted, and he's looking for right, Dutch. Right. Oh, they pick him off though, him. before the carapace was able to be popped, so he's gonna go down. Nice job by Tulex, blinking in and immediately losing Lasso. 
for uh, uh also uh storm static storm being used just to make sure you couldn't spike like carapace or do anything or stun yeah. or whatever this would do say his name multiple times yeah so that's like it's kind of one of the things you see a lot of uh, Nixes do. They they see well maybe S4 has just been doing a little too much this game. He's he's been going against two or three heroes, thinking he can uh, just pop the carapace and run out. But uh, he gets the kill on the Chen, but he's he actually gives up his life. So I'm not sure if that was really worth it. Yeah, probably not. Chen falls off late game anyway, so I guess if you're going to be killing Chen, you want to be getting out, Scott, for you not dying. Yeah. Uh, I guess it does delay the mech from, uh, from the Chen, and uh, seeing as the Keeper of Light has already picked up the mech for NTH, I guess that's kind of one thing you could look at, but you know, I still don't really think it's worth it, and Sinan actually picked up a, his full Desolator, so he's going to be doing lots of damage right now. If they can get the setup they uh, they really want, you know, they're going to be able to, I think he can clear the whole team, with that, especially with that in power. Yeah, I, I was trying to think why I see going Desolator, and I'm assuming it's because of Empower? Oh, here oh Peppy with a blink and RP onto two people. Kelly, my Valentine, you better run away. Oh, the mech charge, they could maybe possibly turn this around, but I don't know. Now there's Batrider onto Ake. Ake gets picked off with the lasso. Gonna go down, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, the mech was already used. The tool X Batrider being enough damage there. Cinder getting stunned up by S4. The, the two man impale and a blink out. The bot tier one tower gonna go down here for no, no tide on her. Unless S4's got something to say about it, he's just pop Vendetta, takes a shockwave to the face. Looking around, they don't have any detection, I don't think, no. That entry's on, uh... What's his face? Uh, disruptor. Oh! Nice kinetic field, but Bulldog comes in. Nice static storm, kinetic field, kick field gonna run out, Admiral Bulldog TP in it, he gets immediately, uh, the other thing, glimpsed out, Loda picks up a kill, Icon class gonna go down, so nicely turned around there by no time hunter. But Admiral Bulldog only got glimpsed back like maybe a hundred yards, so not a big deal for him. Yeah, the real Cinderin was not in that fight. Yeah, exactly. The real problem with that fight was as soon as they picked off two heroes before uh the uh before they were able to get that tier one tower up up in the bottom lane, Cinderin actually just TP back to defend their their top lane against Bulldog. So as soon as that happened I feel like with redefined Magic just had to try to escape before all the TP started coming in. That's one of the advantages of the Nature's Prophet, of course, that we all know, is he's just able to push one lane and then just join the fight as soon as someone comes to defend it, and showing that exactly there is NTH, and they were able to pick off more kills than they lost in the first place. That worked out nicely for them, and they defend their bot tier 1 tower, and are now have now received the kill credit for bot tier 2. Yeah. Uh, redefining Madness. Lotus Farm might get a little bit out of control here, almost at that Mantis style. So, um, you know, we have to kind of worry about that, but Cinder is awesome back up. up. They're going for it, I think. If there's one thing that NTH is really good at, is like always stacking their Ancients and picking a carry that can do it. It's just, he's gotten, uh, Loda has gotten so much farm from those Ancient stacks, and it's, it's really helped him out. But, uh, I, I pretty much always see them doing that, whether they pick Sven, whether they pick Gyro. They're make, they're always making the best use of their uh, of their ancients, something that we haven't seen Redefining Madness do this game. And Luna actually leading the net worth charts, 13,000. Uh, 13, uh, looks like he might have just picked up an item. Smoking out a rush here. No, I didn't actually. But I don't think they're going to utilize that. Yeah, High Rider does have his four staff though, so that's that's definitely one thing for uh, Redefined Man is that they can just get that early pick off. There they go, actually seeing the battery. They're gonna try to keep him by the sentry here, and uh, just being chain stunned to death pretty much. So that sentry really working out. The Observer War gave an extra vision, and right away Battle Rider able to blink and lasso him. So taking him down before the spike carapace could come out. Ooh, just took time to. Well, Bulldog just picked up a Lothars, aka Shadow Blade, in Dota 2. Yeah, and the uh, Necro 3. Yeah, he's had the Necro 3 for a long time. Well, I guess maybe not Necro 3, but he's had Necro for a long time, so yeah. it's expected. That way he can push a lot. Yeah, I'm not and, uh, sure. With a lot more forgiveness, I guess, when he goes deep. <laughs> he goes deep. Um, it goes deep. I don't. Sorry for the wording there. <laughs> uh, gem on disruptor though, so maybe not. 
Uh, yeah, that's a smart pick up there. If, if they can stay together as five right now, I think they have a chance of winning team fights. But um, they really need to stay together. They can't fight without Cinder at all. Uh, Cinder do though does uh, has been getting his farm out quite well. With that in power, I feel like they can still pretty much burst down the, lo the Luna really quick. Despite the great farm. Yeah, uh, BKB and Manta finish though, and some lifesteal from the uh, Mask of Madness and Aegis, so even if they burst him down, they're gonna have to get out of this next team fight unless they take it at, unless we're defining Madness takes the fight, you know, from inside their own base where they can, where they're not gonna have to back off, but Admiral Bulldog pushing bot, forcing a TP from, uh, from Peppy, and looks like Cinderin. That's just so annoying about the news Prophet, just the pushing him all day, especially with that Necro 3. Now, you know, even if you're trying to go as 5 up into the enemy jungle, Prophet can easily just push the bottom lane, force one TP back, and then join the rest of his team in, uh, in the jungle to take on a big team fight. So, you know, it's just, yeah, we're really seeing why uh, MTH favors that Nature's Prophet if they can't get the uh, Lone Druid, of course. Yeah, Prophet just makes you work as a team that much harder to if you want to do something if you're playing from slightly behind like you got to do it quick or our profits on your doorstep again and again and again and even for the best teams it's really hard and sometimes even impossible that was weird there wow. just because of your lineup look at wow peppy with a huge rp four man rp fire napalm going everywhere horses coming out kelly pops bkb pops the alt kelly gonna go down so two for two right now but really it's two for one because kelly's gonna get back Peppy goes down over there in the jungle. Uh, they're not going to be able to kill him again, I don't believe. Cinderin, and in a little bit of trouble. Fiend's grip there from Envy. Able to take him out. And uh, that could be the nail in the in the box. I won't say coffin. Uh, <laughs> we are seeing a uh, 11k gold advantage here for NTH, so not really a surprising outcome to that team fight, but. I feel like that could have gone a lot better. Cinderin was just a little bit out of position. He was too far back here when that four-man reverse polarity came in. If he was just wailing away with uh, with Regen and Power, I feel like the whole it team popped would have out of it and infest on yeah. that four stack of hero. Yeah, he really should have been inside the Magnus, to be honest. Oh, look at how annoying that is. Yeah, uh, so that tier three is down. The Bane. The yeah, I couldn't think of the name. Yeah, the Bane. Yeah, it's pretty strong. Where is I see the Luna? Oh, it's the I was like I don't see a Luna, but I see her attack. So I have the illusions. Uh, Not at a hundred percent today. Also, really unfortunate for that team fight was for redefining Manus was as soon as uh, Tulix tried to go in as well, the disruptor tried to get a nice glimpse off, which I, I think would have been nice if either one of those had gone, but not both. Because the glimpse just canceling the lasso, I think that's, uh, what does it say, teleporting or blinking will bring Oh, the is lasso. that what that was? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So right yeah, away... that was a little bit unfortunate. Before you could even force staff, the, the lasso was broken and <laughs> Lotus just like, okay, well, I'm back. I'm pretty much in a good position now. Peace. Exactly. That's what makes Disruptor, heroes like Disruptor and Shadow Fiend hard to play. Like, you're, you've had abilities that are so great, but if you use them wrong, you know, you can really screw your own team over. Yeah. Shadow Demon, Shadow Demon. Did I say Fiend? Yeah, not Shadow Fiend. <laughs> Shadow Fiend, I'm pretty hard to hear though as well. There's the Empower going around, so yeah, that's going to help them out. I feel like this game is definitely not over though, for Redefined Menace. If we can see an Infest into the Magnus and then another great Reverse Polarity, this, the team fight could go easily in the way of Redefined Madness. But uh, it all comes down to their play and uh, how NTH can respond. They they really can't group up at this point. I mean, they can so group up as well. Demon Edge. What do you think he's building with that and smoke ink here from NTH? Maybe they find Batrider. They have a ward on Tulex. They know he's there, but will they be able to catch him in time? He's gonna set up on the high ground there. I think he's going MKB, or would he just go Daedalus, or maybe he's just going Rapier. I don't know. Yeah, maybe what, whatever the situation requires. Maybe if um, if Loder starts going for a butterfly, he'll, uh, he'll go for the MKB, and then otherwise. Oh, that's that's probably what it is. Yeah, MKB. 
Because you don't normally see crit on uh, life stealers. No, but let's see how if Byrider can catch out of this would be awesome. For a redefined madness, where he's just a little too far back. He pops the flame break. Making a smoke somewhat useless, but there's a big RP, I mean, uh, ultimate there from, uh, from, uh, from Kelly, but going down, the, the Batrider lasso on the fire, and the, just the right-clicking damage was enough. Glimpse away, somebody, someone got glimpsed away. F Admiral Bulldog, obviously. Eternal Envy, possibly gonna go down here. Um, uh, most likely gonna go down. NTH, uh, S4, though, just doing work, and he blinks back into the tree well there, does a little juke. Uh, Cinder now enfeebled up. Trying to run away, trying to armlet trick. Almost got the best of him. I don't know, armlet trick would have saved him there. I think the damage was enough. Admiral Bulldog's like, fine, glimpse me back. My team's my team's got this. I'm just gonna push top. Yeah. Top I mean, two, or three, gonna go down here. He yeah, actually has the the um, sight device as well. But just gonna be pushing on all fronts here. He's just gonna turn and attack to this now. He's gonna shoot him out. I think he. I'm oh, not sure. Oh, well, maybe he can. Lots of damage coming. I think he's got this. <laughs> Oh, I don't know, but nice play by Tulex here. If he pops the ultimate, yeah. Oh, is it gonna find him? No. It's not gonna find him, but he's just oh. gonna TP out! Dutch Freak tested his faith! His faith was too low! Instantly TP's back in, just buy back TP back in. Trying to get some racks. Some scrummaging. Scrummaging, I don't know if that's even a word going on over here between Peppy and the two supports from No Tide Hunter. Bot racks is gone. So that's one lane of rack. Top Rax is, is uh, working on it. The melee uh, is taking about a quarter of its health and damage. But uh, defended, for the most part. Yeah, that last fight, I think we really saw why Keeper of Light is one of the one of the top picks in this patch. Loader going down, he buys back and immediately recalled by the Keeper of Light and able to join that fight. It's just as good as an Aegis at that point. And uh, I. Guarantee the team fight would not have gone the same way except for that uh, play, especially with Admiral Bulldog uh, being glimpsed out, like you mentioned. So, just a uh, really nice play by the Keeper Light, able to stay kind of back out of the fight and uh, just recall load immediately. So, um, and then it, he was able to just come in and, and I guess just pick off the rest of the low HP heroes uh, from this from the little scrap that was going on. Oh yeah, so I was wondering why Luna was back. I was. Really confused, but as soon as he died, I was watching him uh, on my mini map whether he was just gonna TP to the bottom lane. But it was even better just to recall right into the fight. Really nice uh, awareness, I guess, by Aki. And uh, given that synergy with Loda, they've played together for so long. Uh, I was about to say they've been playing together forever. Yeah, really making use of that. It'll be like us when we play professional Dota. <laughs> yeah. Or more realistically, you and Murray, but whatever. Me and Murray do have uh, some good synergy. I mean, we always used to rock uh, bottom lane together. But uh, but then if we go in the same lane, you know, what are the rest of you guys gonna do? You're gonna be hopeless. We're gonna throw! <laughs> yeah, whatever. I carry hard. I'm a professional Dota player. Oh, yeah. Hey, you're just coming off cooldown. Right about now, and uh, MTH pretty pretty aware of that. They're gonna pick up their third Aegis of the game. I don't know if uh, Redefining Madness can contest it, unless uh, we see an infest in the Magnus and they smoke and just try to get there right away. It's gonna go down super fast unless they do that. We got Envy, just sacrificial lamb, nightmare lamb over here, just waiting to see if they're gonna roam over and just blinking out when he sees one. They know they've got the, all the time in the world to do it right now, so no pressure. You can. Can take the time to eat the cheese that's gonna drop. Some fine wine. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I don't know if anyone still one. has a bottle yet. Oh, Nick still has a bottle with a nice red wine filled up in it. <laughs> Sick. Oh, it's about to be a green time. wine. I don't know if I drink that. <laughs> you never know. The longer, uh, the longer wines. Absinthe now. <laughs> Absinthe and cheese. Classic Best combo. Asia. I think, Classic gonna, Dota 2 food. I think they're gonna rock a um, a split push here with Admiral Bulldog, especially with that cheese. Uh, he's pretty he's pretty much set. He can go against any hero, I think. Even the Nakes probably. Um, but is Cinderin gonna get caught out here? If he does, it's not gonna be good for Redefine Nice. S4 just waiting for backup. It won't be good. Here comes Bane with that ultimate. Gonna find it. Cause everyone's got 
I'm blinking TPs, boom! There's the pickoff. They don't even need to use it, but you may as well be safe rather than sorry, because that's a big pickoff right now, and probably a game winner. <laughs> Bane's laugh is so worth it to hear. Yeah, it looks like uh, Cinder does have Flyback, that. Flyback, though, is ready. Yeah. Lots of redefining matters sent by Flyback, actually. Uh, Magnus, Byrider, and me, so. If they can die early enough in the fight, it's kind of weird to say, but if they can die early enough in the fight and do a little bit of damage, then they can buy back and probably defend their racks. But if it's kind of like they're just low on health, then it's going to be pretty hard to uh, to just throw away your life and, and get back in there. Sheepstick on Admiral Bulldog, I don't know if that was mentioned. Yeah, I saw that earlier. Looks so like they're just not using the buyback? That's kind of weird. I guess not, I don't know. Bidding him in a little further, there's the buyback sender and TP's to the, to the mid lane here. Gets immediately sheeped up. Load up! Pop his ultimate. Uh, Chen heal going off, but not enough to save anybody. Well, no one even died yet. Nerd's going down somewhere. I see that he has died. Admiral Bulldog took him out. Big two-man RP there on Eternal Envy and Ake, and then a nice uh, storm uh, field there by Iconoclast onto uh, the rest of NCH. Admiral and Loda. And the fight continues here down by the tower. Not gonna be able to take out Peppy. I, where did he go? <laughs> he got oh, back into base. Oh no, no, oh, he yeah. got recalled by Chen. Recalled, yeah. Yeah, GG's being Same called, difference. Yeah. And there's the GG. Yeah. So I guess I'll take back cameraman duties in the next game here. Yeah, you're all ready to record. Oh. Uh -huh. We'll let the viewers decide who's a better, uh, who's a better recorder. Well, it's hard to do, so you're going to have to decide tomorrow. Yeah, well, we'll let the viewers decide, we'll let the viewers decide. I don't know about Yeah, leave time. comments, I mean, for sure. <laughs> and don't forget to subscribe, because you could win an item set, I guess, if you're choosing. We don't even know the rules. And the new car! <laughs> I'm just going to keep making stuff up to the subscribers. Okay, hold on. A new, uh, one of those little baby cars. No. Uh, talk to our PR manager. You can email him at uh, fmvpdota at gmail.com or something like that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, we have to email. Yeah. Uh, subscribe, subscribe, like, comment, yada yada. Uh, that's all I gotta say. Thanks, guys. Tell your friends. Alright, we'll be back for game two. Yeah, Peace. See ya.